My name is Lance Sensing. I'm the manager here at Polling Station Green and the editor of Combine Harvester Crashers and a whole bunch of other baloney and stuff like that. Um, we are going to show you guys how to sample today uh, a load of organic corn. I have organic corn here in the bucket. Um, that's the truck out there that I pulled the sample off. I use a six foot long probe um, and that's a whole different story but this is the important stuff so this is informational. Um, so we take first take the sample of corn and we dump it through the grain splitter. And then we take one side out. The ticket here is a grain moisture meter. So I'm gonna it's set on wheat right now. Uh, red. Uh, I won't it, just wheat. <laughs> so we'll take this and we'll switch it over back over to corn. I'm giving the option of corn. We'll go ahead hit that. So we got it on corn. We take the sample. We have to fill it enough to cover those. Two. Two wires up and I'm making a mess! Ah. There we go, get it full, and then it'll drop through, like so. See it disappears, drops down in. It drops into this drawer, actually, right here. And this corn right here is approximately 12.7 moisture, 57.2 test weight, um, and 83 degrees. Regular corn is roughly about 56 pound test weight. So what is test weight on corn? That is how much a bushel, like a bushel basket of corn weighs, naturally weighs. This is a little heavier than usual. This one weighs 57 instead of 56 pounds. So it drops in a nice little drawer like this. Go ahead and put that back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slide that in the hole because I don't want those numbers to go away because I have to document all of this. So we're going to go into the toxin test right now. So my first test is I want to grab and I want to get exactly 25 grams. So we got 25, let me get it close as we can. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. And this is our coffee grinder. So regular coffee grinder that you would find in a coffee store to grind your fresh coffee. So we go ahead and we pour that in there. It's gonna get loud right here, and I go ahead and close the top, take one of these little cups right here. We wanna grind this as fine as possible. So we turn it the whole way down to the puree. Fire it up while we're doing that. We go and we get another one, and we're going for 20 grams. And I'll explain all the different ones. Um, so we're going, that's 19, going for exactly, 20. There we go. So that one's on 20. We go ahead, shut this off. We pull this, we put this down here. We put another one on there. That would be for our aflatoxin. Um, so we're checking for molds, toxins, things that will kill chickens and people. This is our Dawn, our vomitoxin test. So we go ahead and fire up. That's only 20 grams. And then we go for the big one. This is the GMO test. So we measure actually out 240. So we got 150. We're gonna go right on. Right on 240. So 240. We go ahead, stop that, get that. So we have our two toxin tests, and then we're going to grind our, so we'll put it up here on auto drip. So that one's not as fine, but it's a bigger sample. So you go ahead and put this in here. Here. And this might be one of the first times that a complete corn GMO organic sample has ever been done on tape like this. So, um, <laughs> might get me in trouble. So I need to empty this bag. So I'm gonna just prop the camera up here, um, right here like this. So we're gonna go ahead and open this. This bag weighs 10 grams. So when I put it back on the scale, I want it to be actually 250 grams. So we go ahead and we drop that in here. Bam! So we take that thing and go like that. We're gonna take these two. We're gonna put them over here. And then we're gonna go get the toxin test out of the fridge. Woohoo! <laughs> it's a. That's the property of Purdue. That's why we have that on here. So this is our one box and biologic test. So that's where we get our testing equipment. These are protein test strips. Um, I'm not a rocket scientist, but I know enough to get myself in trouble. So we take that, put that here, go here, 
I mean, we're trying to do all this in a timely sort of fashion. So we put that there, take this out here. First thing we want to do is pop open our Dawn test. See these little packets in here? They have cocaine in them. No, just joking. It's a dilution packet. So we put that in our aflatoxin with 25 grams. This is our Dawn test. So what we want to do is we want to get our little measuring flask. And for our aflatoxin, this one right here, we want to do uh, 75 grams. Ah, this is so hard to do with two hands. So we want to take this and we want to pour it in here and we want to get 70 milliliters of water. Now I'm not gonna get this perfect because I'm doing it on video, but I'm gonna try to get it good. So 75 milliliters of water. That one gets shook for two minutes. And then we have these little fancy lids down here. We take on here that keeps the fluid from going all over the place. I'm gonna drop this down real quick. I'm gonna show you how we put the lids on, like so. And hopefully I don't lose this video halfway through. This one is probably not gonna upload HD because it's gonna be so long. Because this takes a while. So now we've got this kind of shook up. We're gonna shake that for exactly um, two minutes. So timer goes, we're gonna shake right here, which I could use another person right now. So um, I'm gonna shake that. I'm gonna set the camera down just a little bit. I mean, it's gonna be talking here for a little bit, up over top. So I'm gonna fill the flask up again with 100 milliliters of water. And you can just imagine what I'm doing. Get that 100 milliliter water right here. We're gonna dump that in with that 20 grams and that is for our bomb, a toxin, Dawn test. This is actually a Dawn 3 test. Looks like so. So while we're shaking for two minutes, I'm gonna put the lid on here. You can set it down for momentarily a couple seconds. It doesn't, it's not, it doesn't have to be done exactly perfect. I like to say, I think I do it perfectly, but now I'm shaking too. <clears throat> so this one I only have to shake for 30 seconds. This one I have to shake for two minutes so I can shake it in the time of what we're doing. <gasps> really fun exercise. If anybody, get, anybody wants to show up and help me out with this ever, I'll be more than happy to let somebody shake one of my shakers. <clears throat> shake, 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 shake it. Okay, so that one's done roughly about 30 seconds, not exactly, so I'm still shaking this one. So then I go ahead and I want to fill this cup here up to this line. I forget what measurement, I don't know, GMO test, how much water is that? Uh, where did I put it? Oh, 360 milliliters of water. So we measured it out and we took a shaker cup and got it to that point. So I'm going to go ahead, this is my water pitcher, I'm going to take that and dump it in. Still while I'm shaking this. Ooh. Um, and sorry that I can't do everything all at one time, but I'm trying to. <laughs> Gotta love it. So I'm gonna put that, and then you see how it looks right there like that? We're gonna shake that as well for another 30 seconds. This is our GMO test. Why we do it in a bag? I guess bags are cheap. So I'm going to be doing both of these at the same. So this is how you do it in a bag and an aflatoxin test. Actually, it's already two minutes, actually 20 seconds past two minutes. That one's done, so I'm going to shake this one for another 30 seconds. It's a lot of shaking. I'm trying to get them all done so you can do it all at one time when you're all said and done with this. This one's roughly about, if you're looking at the minute thing, I'm probably not doing this anywhere near right. but. This customer has some of the most amazing cars. I actually think Bill Gates is involved with these people somehow. It's the rumor on the street. So I'm gonna go ahead, let me open up all these. I need two hands to open all this stuff up, just the way it is. And I'll explain to you how I can tell, even if you're getting confused, how I tell the difference between the Aflo and the Dawn. The Dawn has more clear fluid. The Aflo has less. There's our GMO test. So this is our GMO test holder. We go ahead and plop that there. Um, we go take a nice little neat cup, put it in there. And then also as well, um, we take, oh, where's my peanut butter lid? Somebody stole my peanut butter lid. 
that is not a nice thing to do. You do not steal Lance's GMO peanut butter lid. Yes, this is from a peanut butter jar. So, and hopefully I'm not boring you guys to death, but the surprising that you guys are staying on as long as you do. My audience would not stick around because they are adrenaline junkies. You guys are more educational, which is actually impressive. Um, I like to educate everyone so on. So we take a coffee filter, we dop it down in here, and then I go ahead and I take my aflatoxin test, and I pour just a douse in there, just the watery stuff. Put that back, I go ahead and scrunch this up, now there's a lot of different guys that do this a lot of different way. I personally prefer this way because most guys just stick the needle in the cup, but I think that's personally annoying and I'm good at this doing it this way. Go ahead, pitch that in the trash. Then I've got my solution. I go ahead and I have test tubes as well. So this is our aflatoxin. That's how that aflatoxin flex kit. Um, not sure if I'm saying that right, but hey, I'm saying it. Um, so there is our test tube, we want to drop that in there, and then we have our juice in the thing. We want to take this thing. So if you guys wonder why organic is more expensive and GMO is more expensive, um, this is why. And then number two as well, um, we're making sure there's nothing anywhere near harmful. And yes, guess what today, you guys are going to learn something new. Are GMOs harmful for you? GMOs are protein. So protein, in my book, is good for you. The problem is you can patent GMOs, and when you can patent GMOs, personally, I don't agree with patenting nature. So trees, corn, things that are on Earth. It's just wrong, in my book. So we want to go ahead and we get our dilution sheet right here. We pop this open. <clears throat> I'm gonna swing, swing this open, we go ahead, and we go first for the dilution, we take that. This is 100 uniliters. Anybody know what a uniliter is? So we pop that in there, and then I wanna suck from here. So I wanna suck the aflatoxin corn juice. So I wanna get that right there, we squirt it in here, and then that one is ready to go. I go ahead and get rid of that tip because I don't wanna contaminate anything else. So now we go ahead and we put this lid back on. <clears throat> Now we're going to go in for the Dawn 3 Flex Kit, which is a lot, little bit more complicated. Um, uh, we're going to... Hopefully nobody comes back here. See me goofing off with you guys. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and pop this open. Now this one's a little bit more complicated. This one gets even a larger direction. <laughs> Check that out. All right, you want me to film for you? <laughs> film for you. Uh, if you want to, yeah, you can. I'm actually being a guest on another page. Oh, so, that's uh, cool. They're watching. So you take um, 800 uniliters and put it in this cup right here. So one, two, three. So now I want to grab from here. So we go one and 200 uniliters in there. We put that in there, mix that up a little bit, and take that, and we grab 200 milliliters from there and put it in there. So now all our tests are ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab a, our Dawn Free Flex Kit. We're going to take that, put that strip in there. I should have put the GMO test in first, but that is how no, I think it can get fixed. Right. We go ahead and fill it up level with the cardboard right there. And I need to actually go grab over here our GMO <laughs> test strips right here. So these are all the different kinds of GMOs. There's like a whole bunch. So that's how many different kinds of GMOs. We drop that in there, and we reset our timer, and we're going to start out with five minutes. So that one's going for five minutes. This one goes for three, but if you leave them in too long, it doesn't really matter. It's not that big of a deal. And then 
this one's going ahead and uh, it's got to be here somewhere. Uh, there it is. And this is our aflatoxin test strips. And this one goes in for four minutes. As you can see, I got it all in before the five minutes. So this one goes for five, this one goes for four, this one goes for three. You make sure you do them all at once so you don't have to worry about doing it multiple times. I'll take the camera for a quick second here. So this is what it looks like when you're all done. Really junky, really messy. Um, so we have all that going, um, and that is pretty cool. So while that's going, I'm gonna go ahead and he's gonna write down the moisture, test weight, and that. And then I'm going to, which we're back here to the grain grading side of things. So I'm gonna take this, the one side that we're using out of, and put it back in the bucket. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this back in this side, and then I'm gonna pull these screens out. I wanna separate it. We wanna split this down to 500 grams. Why we wanna split it every single time is we wanna make sure we get a very uniform, very well blended sample. And my voice is starting to go hoarse. Isn't that amazing, Justin? <laughs> uh. So we got this out here. We're gonna measure this and see what our weight is at. And drop it in here. We're seeing we're at a thousand grams. So we know we only have to split it one more time to get it right. Um, so I only need one screen for this test. The other test, depending on the test, is how many it gets. So we go ahead and put it back in there, back in there. And then we go ahead and split it one more time. Put that back on there and we should be pretty close to 500. Take it, shake it just a little bit. Look at it, we're at 558. So we wanna put that right as close to, cause we're going on the bushel test weight and we're doing the dockage test on weight. So we're getting, they're getting paid by weight, they're getting docked by weight, everything is done by weight. So we wanna get that as close to focus camera. Focus, you can focus. Yes, okay, so we're under 500 grams. So there, I'm gonna get it right on there. What we're going to be testing for is foreign matter. So anything that is not considered corn. Or if it's really bad and the numbers are really high, we consider that cracked corn. So I don't get on that side of things, but the idea is I want to hit this and I want it to go to a hundred percent, which this is the really most annoying part of the test. Extremely annoying. Okay, it worked this time. Sometimes that takes way too long because the fans on the slow starts for the electric motors can bother this scale because I can wave at the scale and see how the numbers change. It's a very sensitive scale. So I'm going to go ahead and take this, drop it on here. Anything that drops through this screen is considered FN, corn matter, not corn. So we go ahead and we make sure there's no chunks of like corn cobs or anything like here on the top. We go ahead and we drop that over. So see, this one's mostly cracked corn but the numbers are gonna be low on it, so we're just gonna call it foreign matter. So he's at 2.8 foreign matter. So if guys come back and ask him what was the foreign matter created of, it was created of the little red things are called bees wings and obviously cracked corn. Um, and Purdue does not want to pay for cracked corn, we're paying for a whole corn product out of the field. <laughs> so we go ahead and we write that down, 286. So two eight six percent of that load so two percent basically two percent of that load is cracked non whole corn product so that's how we tell so we go ahead and we drop this back over somewhere else where we can get rid of it throw this on here we split this in half and we look for damage kernels so kernels that are effective and we want 250 I hate it. You can do it! You can do it! Ah, there we go. Bam! Okay, 250 grams. So we want to hit zero again because we're looking not for 50%. We're looking for 100% of the sample that's in the pan. We want to know how much of that percentage is damaged. So, how many, how many, how many, how many, how many, how many? Come on, we can do it, we can do it. And we're at five minutes over here. So, I will let that play around, figure out what the damage is. I'm gonna go ahead and 
this is gonna be tricky. So we go ahead and we pull the sample and the idea is we wanna cut off all the color part. So I'm gonna drop this one down here. I'm gonna slice it off with my peanut butter hit lid. There we go. And slice the dawn. You're wondering how this looks. It was just like that. That one like flew back, flew back in the ditch or whatever. Um, and then we slice the aflatoxin. So these are all sliced. And we're going to sneak into the front office and take these and put this in the machine and find out what the actual levels are. Okay. So this is our testing equipment, right? Jane, I'm doing a Facebook Live showing them how to, to test this. I'm actually a guest on somebody else's page. Um, they're really cool. So we pull this out right here. We drop our GMO test in here. And this is our Dawn test. And then this is our, I got that one upside down. That is our aflatoxin. So we go ahead, we slide that forward. We hit test. And it goes through its process grab my little mouse back here and to get our results so we hit next and then here is all our levels so we're at 0 0.01 dawn and then aflatoxin we're at 0 0.41 and then we've got one GMO here this is an R&R &R, which is a roundup ready GMO we have 0 0.58 and that is it. Um, so I'll have Jesse take, take over that. And if you're wondering what safe levels are, toxins, it depends what you're using it for and what the application is. We don't like to see any at all, but there's obviously some in some times. Those were completely safe numbers that you saw. The GMO is 5% is the cutoff. So depending who you're working for, it could either be three or 5%. So those number numbers were good as well. So our scale is ready, good to go. We're gonna flop that right in here, bam, we're good. And we look for damage. When I tell people to search for damage kernels, it's basically anything you wouldn't wanna eat. So stuff that's kind of defective, bug hole, put it, take that. And this one is a really good looking sample. I mean, I'm just not seeing much of anything on there. So this one is very little, so 0.07 damage, so 0.07% damage, we go ahead and so this tested out, our test weight is 57, <clears throat> moisture is 12, temperature is 83, 2.8 FM cracked corn, and then we have 0.07% damage. So this farmer um, has a perfect bill of health on his corn, so we go ahead and we tell that farmer, go ahead, you can dump your product in the bin. I'm gonna start these things up. You go ahead, go out there and tell him that he can dump. And we make sure that we're in bin number six, which is our wet bin. This is not wet corn, but we're using our wet bin because that's the only space we have. So we have it switched over to wet bin. You hear that little click, that means the elevator's up to speed, and then we go ahead and turn the pit drag on. And the farmer is going to dump his grain in my pit. So you get to see it for yourself, the end product. down into the green. It's a golden probe. No, it's not a gold. It's actually brass. Um, but how it works is if you turn it clockwise and it opens. Uh, nope, we got to turn it clockwise. Bottom to top. So we don't get all the corn running all in the top right off the top of the load. Where I shove it in is the corn that I want in there. So one of these days he should uh, open his gate. Locking the gate. The corn goes into the green. Goes in the green. 
train system goes down the conveyor here, up the elevator, and down the downpipe into this bin. And it's dusty out here. So that's how you get a drain sample um, done on our load of GMO-free organic grain. So you guys seen it first. Um, thanks for watching. Um, we went on for 25 minutes. Usually it doesn't take 25 minutes. Usually I can get that nailed out roughly in about 10, about 10 minutes. I usually try to 10, 12, 13 minutes. I can have it all nailed out or whatever. But uh, yeah, you can hear it going in the elevator, going up to the top, into the bin. So yes, thank you all for watching. Um, please like this video, share this video, and yeah, be nice to Derek, because Derek's my friend. See y'all later.